Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Nothing But Knicks, the official New York Knicks podcast of Gotham Sports Network. My name is Andrew Claudio. I hope you all enjoyed your 4th of July's, your week off from this show because we needed some time just to detox from everything that went down during free agency week and the lead up to the draft and all of the above. So joining me now, though, to talk a little free agency and a little bit of Summer League, somebody that was at Summer League from Knicks Fan TV, it's Mr. CP. Bro, how have you been? Andrew, oh man, it's been a whirlwind of a month. From you got that right. I can imagine for you and how often you live stream how yeah, it's been. Or, or two months, you know, going from even the draft to free agency to summer league and, and back. And it, but it's been fun, it's been a lot of fun, and I can't complain, you know. I don't, I don't want to like spoil any plans that you have for the summer, but how much of a break are you gonna take? I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a little bit of break. Uh, I, thankfully, the Knicks are not gonna make the summer league playoffs. <laughs> and I'm even I'm even more thankful that I missed the cutoff in Vegas to get to the sports book in time to make the pick on the Knicks to win the whole thing because I, I was ready to put the house on it. So oh, thank wow, God okay. I missed the cutoff for that. So, <laughs> so but no, but no, we're definitely going to take a break between now and the start of training camp preseason. Between then, we'll probably do some more recorded content maybe some look back videos, things of that nature. But no, we're, we're definitely taking a break. Yeah, I I mean, I've, I said it to you plenty of times off air when we the different watch parties that we've hung out. Your hustle is incomparable, my friend. It is very cool to see somebody else grinding out there. And it, it's it's just it's commendable. Um, the last time we spoke, at least on this podcast, um, it was right before Anthony Davis got traded and that was really like yeah. the first real bomb of free agency and and the dominoes then started to fall so that was when I was making the case for the Knicks to trade for Anthony Davis uh, mm-hmm. I was then uh, I proceeded to then be dragged by your comment <laughs> section um, that was a thrilling experience shout out to all of the watchers and viewers of Nick Van TV love each and every one of you <laughs> Uh, by the way, I will defend my LeBron top eight take t- to the day I die. Like last year, he was okay on defense. I stopped listening after LeBron top eight. Okay, so you're telling me based off of last season, you're taking him over Steph. You're taking him over Anthony Davis. You're taking him over Giannis. You're taking him over Paul George. He wasn't even top eight in all NBA. I can defend I, this take pretty easily. You still gotta, you still gotta respect him, man. What he still put up like twenty-seven and eight. I'm not saying offensively he's still not able to get his points, but it is yeah. a flat-out fact he does not play defense anymore, especially when he's not motivated. Which for all of last season he was not motivated. It's also not disrespectful in a league of over four hundred players <laughs> to say he's number eight. <laughs> well, well, you know what I think. In, in fairness to him, going into the West in his first year. Getting used to that ump-tempo style, he, he got to coast at times. He's getting old, man. I when agree. You, when you go to what do, you, what do you go to seven or eight straight finals, and he's literally playing from what from October straight through June. So how many how much time off do you do you really get? So that, in a couple Olympics here and there. That's I think where the take gets misunderstood. I'm not saying mm-hmm. he cannot get into top five again it's not a list that is concrete that he's only gonna drop further on the list this isn't the espn list where you can't move up the list (laughs) ever again i basically exactly like he's he's no he's eight and can never be higher no he absolutely can jump into the top five these lists are forever changing i know as Knicks fans, we don't like to reference Bill Simmons right now, especially after the coverage wow. the Ringer has given yeah, to exactly. the Knicks so far over the last Clowns. few weeks. Clown show. Clown uh, bro, show. Uh, homie uh, Nick Central on Twitter, the Say Knicks for Clicks hashtag that he started is is You're so doing. accurate. It's it. It, it's so simple. Just, oh, so Say Knicks for Clicks. That's all we had to do. And we can call out bullshit when we see bullshit. Awesome. I, I love it, man. But but you know what's the good thing about it? And, and even though... Uh, a lot of people were upset about what transpired there in free agency, but I think people were even more pissed off about the biased and, and negative coverage and just the striving for attention and bashing the Knicks from from a lot of major media outlets, too. It was like damn near embarrassing. But I think on the flip side, 
I think it even more so propels our platforms to our fan base to show them that we are more fair and balanced coverage. We're, we're a passionate group that, you know, we hustle. Like you said, we hustle, we grind to bring the fan base quality content, whether it's podcast, whether it's video, whether it's blog form. And I think that the media backlash really helped people see what we're all about. Yeah, and it's it's just so obvious who's informed and who isn't. Like if you're if you're still bringing out the Porzingis trade when yeah, I I think we concluded this. Like the Knicks are much better off not having this kid in their lives right now. Like I I still don't know what he looks like healthy over a year and a half since his injury. He's got an impending sexual assault case coming soon. He's getting in fights where he is on camera bloodied up. Like, imagine that right before free agency, which is why I think you just want to look at the Mavericks free agency and maybe take a guess at what's going on there and how right. nobody wanted to go play there. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, if you're only bringing up Porzingis and how, oh, they only tra- they traded him to make room for cap space. It's like, no, he <laughs> clearly right. did not want to be here and was going to yeah. be a problem. They made the best deal available. Like, we're praising Sam Presti right now for the haul he got back. And what the Knicks got back was a haul of assets and cap space. It just so happens to be yeah. that they also traded Chris Porzingis in the process. Yeah, I mean, listen, you got to do what you got to do. I, I think if you're going to really look back at it, okay, do you want to say maybe they should have tried to make amends? Maybe the differences just weren't amicable. Yeah. And so at the end of the day, they did what they had to do. They got rid of a guy that didn't want to be here. And in return, they got the best deal they could to put themselves in position to sign free agents this off season. They didn't get their top targets. They told you what they were going to do if they didn't get their top targets. And I think they did it. Yeah. And I think they did it. So, uh, you know, all of the the naysayers and all that, man, I, I laugh at all of it, man. And I even laugh more at people that just get so up in arms about it because it's a clear setup for attention, especially on Twitter. It's a clear setup for retweets and likes and engagement. And I don't engage in any of it. I, I look at it as pure comedy. And like I tell people, this is why I'm here. <laughs> this is why we're here. You know, the Nothing But Knicks podcast, Knicks Fan TV, Knicks Film School, Posting and Toasting. This is where the quality content is about the team, you bingo. know. So you don't you don't have to worry about the garbage that's out there. Nah, bingo, bingo. Just to finish the thought, Bill Simmons yeah. in the book of basketball that he wrote back in oh mm-hmm. eight oh nine, I think it was. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. His line about his all time rankings in the pyramid that he made mm-hmm. is that it's forever changing. It's not set in stone. The book of basketball is always being written. So when Andrew Claudio says to CP, and I know I just quoted myself in the third person and it's super (laughs) arrogant, but whatever, I'm making a point here. All right. When I say to you, LeBron right now is top eight. It's solely based on what I saw last season. Every time I saw him play, he just seemed not motivated. Well, guess what? That's that's why he hasn't won an MVP since 2013. I get it. He probably should win it every year. But if we're just basing it off a regular season award, he turns it on for the playoffs. And more power to him. That's how he gets to eight straight finals. But I then have to dock you a few points if you don't try during the regular season, you know? Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. You know, the, like you said, the chat definitely. Uh, oh, they roasted me. <laughs> they, they dragged they me. Roasted you, man. But but that's it. That's your intro, that's your initiation to the show, man. Look I made at it. it. That's <laughs> no, that. So what the rule with comment sections? I think we talked about it, is just never look at it. That that's I think the overarching rule with comment sections is just don't read them. It, yeah, it could get ugly, man. Okay, it, it's not for the faint of heart. Live and learn. Thing. Live and learn. So. If you had to give a grade for free agency and how the Knicks did, I don't think, in fairness, you could give them an A because they technically did strike out on the big targets, even though, in context, this probably wasn't a gamble they were ready to take. But what would your grade for free agency be? Uh, Looking at it now, with with the Morris signing complete, I got to give it a BB minus, man. You know, like you said, it's not going to be an A because clearly we did. It wasn't Plan A, right? We, yeah. we didn't get. We, plan A wasn't met, so we went to Plan B. But I think if you look at what we did, we we fortified our youngsters with high IQ basketball players, with toughness, with physicality, with grit, and they, you know, they still went out and got a Julius Randle. They still got a young player who still has some promise. 
you know, only 24 years old, somebody who, who could potentially be here for the long term. We don't know. They, they signed him to the longest deal of the rest. But for the rest of the guys, I like that they went front court heavy. I know a lot of people didn't. But the reason why I like that they went front court heavy is because we just don't know. Number one, we needed a four. We, we had no front mm-hmm. court help whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Cornette was not going to do it. Vonley was was a cool signing last year. That was like my last, re, re, you know, my last, last option in terms of this year. I like what Vonley brought, but I, I wanted something else. So I thought the, the, the fact is, is that with Mitch, we, we he's just getting started. Right. We, we don't know if he can handle an 82 game grind. We don't know if he's going to hold up. We don't know how, how he's going to adjust in year two. Is he going to continue to stay disciplined from a foul standpoint? You know, how, is he going to stay durable? So I like that they brought in Gibson. To me, Gibson is kind of like this year's DeAndre Jordan. I think he'll fill that role. I like Portis. He, he, some people didn't like the deal that they gave him, but I think Portis, again, brings that toughness, brings rebounding, and can stretch the floor. Yeah. I, I like, I love Marcus Mars. I think that was a great move. To me, Marcus Morris not staying with the Spurs and coming to the Knicks, whether or not you want to say, well, it's $5 million, I think it means something. I, I think it means we're, we're moving in the right direction because he has to come here and know that he's not going to be guaranteed starters minutes. He has to come here and know that he's going to be here to be a mentor to these kids as, as well as a player on this team that can help us win. So, like I said, I like that, you know, we got some solid picks. The Peyton deal was questionable in that what I wanted from a point guard acquisition, I either wanted someone who was going to be a cut above the rest. So if you're talking Kyrie in an ideal situation with a healthy KD, I would have taken it. I would have taken Kemba. But if if we didn't get that, I wanted someone who was going to be a solid veteran where we can let DSJ be the guy and let Frank be the backup. But with Peyton here now, you kind of add to that Moutier situation where it's more of like a point guard carousel. Like who's going to yeah. who's gonna establish himself as the guy? And what, how is Fisdale going to manage the minutes? Oh. Now it, it seems like Frank <laughs> is, is completely buried. Yeah, I, that's the, the biggest takeaway I have is that I don't think they're done with players. I think it's more just... Not necessarily they're going to add anybody else, although Bullock, I guess, is still out there if he wants to come here for the right. for the mid for the exception. Mm-hmm. Um, I agree with you that I'd go like B minus C plus, you know, because okay. there's like two or three acquisitions that I was like, okay, like we can. I liked the Randall signing. I liked mm-hmm. Taj Gibson. Okay, that's that's one too many because like I look at this team and mm-hmm. you have. I'm just going to read off a couple names. Read off the yep. list real quick. Uh, yeah. Dennis Smith Jr., Alfred Payton, Frank mm-hmm. Nilakina, Kadeem Allen, uh, R.J. Barrett, Marcus Morris, Kevin Knox, Wayne Ellington, Alonzo Trier, Damian Dotson, uh, Ignas Brazdikis. I'm learning that name slowly. <laughs> uh, Mitchell Robinson, Julius Randle, uh, Bobby Portis, Taj Gibson. Mm-hmm. I just named 15 guys, and I still haven't mentioned Chris uh, Wilkes and uh, and Reggie Bullock if they sign him. Right. I mean, well, at, at what point is it too many guys? You know, I I don't think so. I think it's a I think it's a nice problem to have, right? You you have you have Kadeem Allen and Wilkes on your two way. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yes, right? it, it, those are your two way guys. So they'll they, you can stash them in Westchester for some time. I don't think Taj Gibson is going to trip over playing time as much as the rest. I think he, like I said, I think he can kind of fill that DeAndre Jordan role. He's he's coming to the end of his career. I think. He needs to be here, yes, as a defensive piece. And I think from a matchup standpoint, you're going to need him some nights depending on the size that you're going up against. But I think, you know, Todd Gibson is a guy that can can just kind of slide in from a support standpoint. Ellington is another guy that I don't think you necessarily have to guarantee minutes to, even though he paid these guys. <laughs> I, I I don't think he's a guy that you, that you have to promise minutes to. I think this still has to go through the youth with veteran support. I still like that they're going to bring in Bullock, even though the, the plantar fasciitis thing is kind of iffy. I like that they're, they're renegotiating the deal. You bring in him in Ellington. We needed shooting, and I think we got 
some good shooters at a reasonable price, right? Obviously, JJ Redick was out there. He went to the Pelicans, but, yeah. he, but he, he was it was it was he was more of a pricey move. I think he's making about thirteen and a half. He's, he's also about, yeah, he's also got that streak he's worried about about like he's never missed the playoffs. So yeah. Right, I, and good I, for him. I, I think he's at a point where he should be competing for something. I think the, the Pelicans could uh, could could be a tough team in the West. And could be. I, although, I was, Jesus, Zion, like a salad. Yeah. Like I'm not trying to make fun of anybody's physique here, but man, like that picture's just not doing anybody justice. Like the first thing I said when he came out of the tunnel is like, "All right," like looks a little out of shape, and then didn't uh, make it through a half. Yeah. How would, I, I how do you look in person? Huge, 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 as in like linebacker like, or like, lineman? Yeah. No, like linebacker. Okay, he, he, he looked he looked huge. Well, I mean, let me just say, man, the whole atmosphere was electric for a summer league game. If, if you if you just close your eyes for a second, you would think you're you're in like the playoffs, so like a regular season game. the The place was filled to the brim. You had LeBron there. You had AD show up. Not, not for the Lakers game. He shows up for the Pelicans game. Funny yeah. Enough. And yeah, Floyd Mayweather, you, you probably had some other people in the stands. The Knicks, Knicks fans were, I think we were the most represented fan base in Vegas. I think we even beat the Lakers fans this year, probably because well, they didn't have much going on for some Obviously, weeks. we are represented in Vegas now, CP. Everybody yeah. in New York is now a Nets fan. So... <laughs> Obviously, we all migrated out west, and we now we're in Vegas. West. We all came out west for a vacation. I don't man, make that, the rules, man. The rule, I just I'm enforce them. Okay, everybody it, it here beautiful. is a Nets fan now. This is a Nets town. All of a sudden, there. Well, put it this way: there were no Brooklyn jerseys in Vegas, and I'm not even making it up. I, there, there was no Brooklyn jerseys in Vegas. I saw none. Yeah, can I be honest with you? I don't. Yeah. I used to work at Dick's Sporting Goods. I think that's the only time I've ever seen a Brooklyn Nets jersey like, <laughs> not on the court or in Barclays Center. Like, I, like I'm not trying to throw shots because I actually do. Like Jeremy and I talked about it like during the off season, honestly throughout the season, how Brooklyn's actually like a pretty impressive what they've done and what Sean Marks has done. I didn't think it was going to be Kyrie Irving and and Kevin Durant good, but I am impressed with like what they've done, and I give them all the credit in the world. This yeah. notion that they're going to take over New York is just laughable. No, 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 no. I don't, I don't see, it. I don't see it that way. I, I, I agree with you, and I've said it many times on my show and my videos. They have to be commended for digging themselves out of a huge hole, and they, they went through four straight losing seasons, got forty something wins, and got to the playoffs. And, and Marx has has a lot to do with that. So he definitely deserves a lot of credit. I was, I will tell you, I was nervous when they made the crab deal because when they threw the first round pick and attached it to that deal, there was some type just, of certainty to what there they were was doing. some yeah. sort of certainty. Right. And I was more so hoping that it was like a Jimmy Butler certainty. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> than, like, than like a Kevin Durant. Certainty. So Tobias Harris has verbally right. committed. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Because at the same time, that was around the same time when the Kyrie to the net stuff was getting really hot and heavy. Yeah. So, listen. At the end of the day, when when that whole thing went down, my pain was more so the fact that they went to the that he, Kevin Durant went to the Nets. If he would have just went back to the Warriors, I wouldn't have had any issues with it. I would have just carried forward and you know celebrated Julius Randle. But the the Nets thing really really stung for a couple of days. But then we were able to kind of move forward. So I, I'm all right now. I'm all yeah. right. Now. Yeah, I agree. It. Like I said this also on on here, and then like it's kind of been the common theme throughout all of the different the content yeah. creators is that the only part that really sucks about this is the reaction. Like at the end of the day, in a vacuum, the Knicks weren't ready to get a, a super team That's like right. that. They weren't ready That's to right. support a Kyrie Irving with honestly some very questionable leadership exactly. issues. I don't know if the Knicks are ready to give him the keys to a seventeen yeah. win team and to give. Kevin Durant, a max deal off a of torn Achilles. I, I, plain and simple, the Knicks were not ready to be in that position. It's a gamble you take if you're Brooklyn because it's the absolute peak uh -huh. of what you can be. But the Knicks, I mean, Perry and Mills have consistently preached building the right way, not going to jump at an irrational 
a, mm-hmm. a move like that, and this was them doing that. They didn't rush to sign, to rush to trade for Westbrook, or rush to, right. to, to, to no, uh, don't get me started. The, mm-hmm. I don't like, like I'm like I'm like you. I don't like to argue on Twitter, but mm-hmm. it just the, the people telling me. Oh, he averaged a triple double. He won an MVP. <laughs> right. Just Google Russell Westbrook contract and then tell yeah. me that you wanted him on the Knicks. All you have to look at is the fact that both KD and Paul George couldn't wait to get out of there. And how about Paul George last year preaching all this loyalty to Westbrook and everything and how loyal he yeah. was and about wanted to that. play the yeah. <laughs> How about that? The minute he could bolt and go back home, he was out of there in the quickness. Yeah, dude, I... I feel like I'm taking crazy pills when I talk to people who stand for Russell Westbrook. I actually loved his MVP season and how out for blood he was. And it was so clear. It was just a reaction to Kevin Durant leaving. And now that we know the like even further details that he gave a verbal commitment to KD uh, to, to Russ like days before he went out to the Hamptons. Yeah, yeah. I'd be pretty pissed, too. Having said that, this obsession with triple doubles, even though they are so overrated when it it's comes, so when it comes, especially when it comes to success for your team, right? It it's it's mind blowing. It, it's like a guy that hits fifty home runs on a team that doesn't make the playoffs. Like all you're, you're not trying. Like I get it in baseball, that works better because the individuality of that sport works. Like it's literally you just could have like seven individuals that are successful and your baseball team's good. You have to have a team effort with basketball. I mean, we're just going to look at the guys who have left Russ and been better. Like I get Kevin Durant was probably going to be great wherever he went. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But what has Serge Ibaka become now that he's not just either setting a screen or standing in a corner waiting for Russ to pass him the ball. Like that whole argument we gave during his MVP season was that he has no help. Meanwhile, Victor Oladipo was standing in the corner the entire time. <laughs> was still waiting for him. Right. I, I, I just I don't like his style of play. So I'm already coming at it from the perspective that I'm not a fan. And then you add that he's 30. Then you add all of his efficiency numbers that are god awful. Mm-hmm. And then you add in the fact that he's going to in tw- in 2023, he has a player option for $47 million. I, I want no part of that contract. Yeah. It's the third worst. It's either the second or third worst contract. They just got traded for one of those worst contracts in the sport. So I, I and I thought that was probably the only likely move that was going to happen was that CP three move. But I think, listen, I think Brody is, is a hell of a player. He's a, he's a hell of a talent at, at, at an attack first point guard. He has a drive that is, you know, maybe matched by only LeBron, you know, maybe the Greek freak is, is, is matching that, that the way he just com- just goes full blown kill. But like you said, I, it's just left to be seen if his style of play can fit. It's just, it's just like mellow to a certain extent, not, not in that their style of play was the same, but they have a style of play that is just so isolated from the rest that it's just hard to see if he can really succeed at the next level. And like I said, he, he's a great player, but we had no business going after him. At all. We have no business going after him. And I told people that there's no more tr- boneheaded trades to be made. There's no more mellow trades to be made. Stop chasing free agency. I don't care about Greek Freak. I don't want to hear about yesterday they dropped the 2021 free agency potential. I don't want to hear anything about that. Any article that's not talking about our current roster – I'm not I'm not even clicking. I'm not even looking at it. Yeah. You know, for, forget about it, man. Yeah. You got to focus on what we have right now. Yeah, I'm I'm right there with you. And the tough part is we all are kind of guilty of the last six months and what the, what yeah. has happened. You know, I know the day of the Porzingis trade, I thought it was similar to what the Nets did in trading crab in a first because mm-hmm. there was some hint of certainty that they knew something was going on. And looking back like we said at the beginning, there was clearly just a disconnect between KP and his camp and the Knicks and their camp. And this just was a relationship that needed to end that one really didn't have to do with the other. It just set the Knicks up if they were going to have a successful free agency that they could. (laughs) Having said that, I'm just, I'm not looking at 2021 as the next time the Knicks are good. I want to make the playoffs this year. I cannot watch a 17 win team again. And yeah, I look at this season, and I love how we're kind of just bouncing around right now. Like, mm-hmm. there's really, yeah, it's all good. I, I, <laughs> it's a good I look at this team, and I don't know if – I still think they have too many guys. I think there's, like, a move or two to be made because it's not even so much that 
the money of guys that are going to have to be the 11th, 10th or 11th man on the team. It's the minutes. They have 14 guys on the roster right now that averaged over 20 minutes last season. Yeah, I agree. I I agree. You can definitely look at it in in that regard, especially when you add in all these guys on, especially two year contracts, which is really one year guaranteed. Mm -hmm. Is it going to be a situation where a guy is just going to be out for self? How much are guys going to be willing to take a step back, sacrifice for one another, sacrifice for the betterment of the team versus, you know, money's always a motivator. Money's the root of all evil. It's what brings down our society, right, on a whole. So it's like how much are these guys going to be motivated by the, for their next contract yeah. as opposed to really coming together for the sake of this team? I definitely agree with you. 17 wins is not going to cut it. I think this is Fisdale's first full year of evaluation. I think he has to figure out the proper rotations. We can't have these musical chairs rotations anymore. I think he has to be coaching game situations and coaching to win. Uh, We can't just be coming out with these experiments. But, you know, at the same time, I think, like I said, I I think this team, even, even though we have a lot of pieces, we still have to be in the asset acquisition mode. Yeah. I think one of the things with having the contract flexibility of all of the guys that you got with maybe the exception of Randall for this year is, like I said, if you bring in a Morris, maybe he gets flipped at the deadline to a contender and you get a first round of back. Or maybe he makes a Portis expendable or somebody else expendable and you can get back an asset here or there. So we still have to be, yes, we want to build to win. And I think that's what they did. But you still also have to be able to to you know keep acquiring your, your assets un, until you you build a team that you, you feel like you can move forward with for your future yeah i agree i i, I like that this is now a team that's not 100 percent dependent on yeah. 19 and 20 and 21 year olds this isn't right. going to be a team next year that is a glorified college team that is playing nba games you know um i like that Dennis Smith Jr. is going to have to earn his starting spot. I think he'll get it, yeah. but he's going to have to earn it. I don't know if Kevin Knox is a starter anymore, which <laughs> off of last season, I don't know if Marcus Morris now becomes the starter off of merit or if they want to give Kevin Knox a, com- a competition. And look, if the Knicks are good next year, they're not going to trade Marcus Morris. And a lot of right. things will have broke right for them to be a contender for the playoffs. But at the end of the day, if the Knicks fall out of contention and Morris all of a sudden gets traded to a contender, you're going to get a good turn of return for that. You right. Know? So I I like that, that, is, that there's there's yeah. now a mix of a veteran presence and something to push this team that isn't just like a pouty Ernest Cantor and Noah Vonley, who's all of 24, 25 years old. Right. And I, I know this is like saying Voldemort, to Knicks fans, but Emmanuel Moutier is not on this roster, and Thank God. <laughs> I know <laughs> I've 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 heard. <laughs> um, I you're now able to look at the backups or the the counterparts for all of these young guys and say, mm-hmm. oh hey look, a veteran he can learn from, which yep. I think is the best plan for going forward. I, I love it, I love it, man. I think it's going to make the practices highly competitive. I think these guys are going to come ready to play. I like what Mitch is talking. I, I feel like Mitch is really trying to assume a leadership position. I, th- I feel like even Knox is, is just even just watching him in summer league and, and watching him with the guys. I feel like he's really trying to assert himself now as kind of, you know, in his second year. Just it, just, it seemed like a bit more maturity from both of those guys, from Knox and Mitch. You know, ISO is going to come to play. He's already come, came into the league with a chip on his shoulder just from being undrafted. I just like the overall attitude and and the swag of this team. From a playoff standpoint, I think this is where I I I think this team will go as far as DSA takes him, to be mm. honest. From, from a playoff standpoint, I think this is a big year for him to really show if if he can, you know, be this guy for the future for, for our franchise. He he has to take a next step and, and show that he can really run this offense. Um, and, and he's putting in the work. You know, that's what I like. He, he's out there. He's working out with CP3. He did a lot of PR in Summer League, man. He, he was everywhere talking talking a good game, talking playoffs. He wants to make RJ Rookie of the Year, all that. But mm. it, it's really up to DSJ, man. If DSJ can, can really put it all together, 
I like our chances to, to maybe fight. I said 29 games for me would be my bar. Anything over that to me would, would be success. That That's where I'm putting it right yeah, now. Yeah, I was saying this with Schwinn. I've never been more excited to watch a 32-win team potentially. You know, yeah, like I, I'm like, oh, wow, that's 13 more wins than last year. I can't wait. Me you too, know? man. But as you said, I think the million dollar question is whether or not Knox, who starts at the three. I just I I just don't know. How can you bench this kid for one year rental or potential rental uh, or halfway rental? Yes. What? He is also 19 turning 20. Like there, he, is, he is. He is. He just he is also just getting started. I get it. There was just such a clear I'm not ready to be playing this many minutes yes, with him I last agree. season. I agree. And maybe part of his maturity process is we're going to give this veteran who has earned a starting job a starting right. job and you a rookie are going to earn it back. I I right. I, I don't think it a conflict is bad to an extent when it comes to building character and young players. You see it all throughout. Uh, like football is kind of the biggest one where this happens, where you have to mm -hmm. earn your position. I think if you create this in basketball, it can work. I still stand by. I think there's like one too many guys on this team because you really only need nine or ten to be relevant. But mm -hmm. listen, if you're just looking at each one and one that they signed or one year mm -hmm. deal that they signed as a potential asset, then I can't complain, especially if like, say you only get a second round pick for Bobby Portis when you trade him, if, and when you right. trade him, the last two second round picks for the Knicks are Brasdikas who look like a standout in summer league and Mitchell Robinson, who might make all NBA defense this yeah. year. Although I got to remember that, like I got, I keep saying that. And then I remember that Embiid and Rudy Gobert exist. So maybe just, he looks like a really good young prospect. Okay, that's what I'll yeah, say. Yeah, I mean, for where, for where you got him from, yeah. the, the returns have been great so, yeah. so far. The returns have been pretty good so far. So let's talk about Summer League. Um, okay, first question, because we talked a little, yeah. you, you already talked about the actual night of being in the building for Zion vs. RJ. There was also an earthquake. Have you ever <laughs> been in an earthquake so before? So the one that happened in New York a couple years ago, I don't. I didn't feel that one. Okay, I was <laughs> in Virginia the, for that one, so I didn't feel yeah. it either. I I didn't feel that one in New York, and and all right. So here's what happened. So I'm I'm sitting with CK2K and and uh, Terry and Trey. If you okay. know who those are. So we're so we're over there. It's it's like fourth quarter, maybe about ten minutes left, and and I'm getting ready to make my way over to Jonathan Macri from Nick's Film School okay. and Dave Fortenick. So they're sitting in. We're all sitting in like opposite sections. Just just by the way, we kind of arrived to the stadium. So I'm getting ready to go over to go meet them and chill with them for the rest of the game. And as I'm walking out of my section in the rotunda, I see a lot of people leaving. So I'm like, all right, you know, game is kind of wrapping up a little bit. Like the Pelicans had jumped back out to like a, a 10 to 12 point lead. So I'm like, all right, maybe maybe some people are just kind of filing out, getting 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 ready to get their Friday night started. Then all of a sudden I get back to my original seat to grab my stuff. And the guys that I'm with are like, yo, did you feel that? I might feel what? <laughs> <laughs> they were like the earthquake. I said, wait, 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 wait. There was an earthquake just now. And they're like, yeah, look up. I look up and everything is swaying. The scoreboard, the Jesus, speaker system, man. like all the equipment that's up in the Raptors is just swaying back and forth. I said, oh, shit. Bro. That's God. That's God saying, hey, it's time to go. Like, it's time to leave the yeah. arena. Yeah. So it, it was an unbelievable experience. So many people, you know, everybody from home is calling me like, are you good? Are you good? And it's, it seemed like if you were sitting down anywhere in Vegas, you definitely felt it. But if you were like kind of on the move or walking around, you may you may not have felt it, yeah. and that's what it was. I I didn't feel it, man. But it was a crazy experience. Yeah, I loved Frudernick's reaction of like what? Like it's an aftershock. It's nothing. It's like for us East Coasters, no, the ground moved. It's time to yeah. leave. Like what are you talking about? It's yeah, nothing. It's time to go, man. It, I I just I re I've had uh illusions of grandeur. One day, maybe moving out to the West Coast where the weather is so much better than here. And I would love for basketball games to start at 4 p.m. instead of 7 p.m. every night. And <laughs> yeah. like I just like the time zone sounds like a hint of an upgrade, you know, and it's 75 degrees every day. Uh, 
and then the ground moves and it's like, oh, you know what? Maybe New York's not that bad. <laughs> when, when I used to go out to uh, Cali, because well, my wife's, uh, her family's from out there. So we okay. go out there regularly. And when I used to go out, start going out there, that would literally be the first thing on my mind as soon as I touch down. Like, <laughs> when is the ground going to just open up? That's God, yeah. man. That's God saying, nope, you're, you're an East Coaster. Yeah. Like, stay in New York. It's like, so you're like you're you're a New Yorker. You're a Long Island guy. So, mm. you ever been to Six Flags? Of course, great yeah, adventure. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah, all the time. So every time I've gone, I want to say since like oh nine oh eight, mm. uh, King da Ka, like that really tall ride has Crazy. been closed because it got struck with lightning. That is God telling me never to take this yeah, ride. Like I've never been on it, and I don't plan on going on it. I don't crazy. understand people that are like, I hope this ride is open. No, <laughs> it got struck by lightning yeah. multiple times over like a span of a decade. <laughs> I'm sorry. I have been officially confirmed to never go on this ride. Um, it, so you it, didn't it, feel the crazy. earthquake, though. No, I, I okay. didn't. But, um, but yeah, just so back to Summer League, once again, Knicks Nation was out there so heavy. It, it was crazy. I, I was getting so much love out of people that that recognized me from the show. Oh, that's awesome. Coming up to me. Yeah, that was crazy. Yeah. Um, like I said, met, met a ton of fans. A, a lot of us were out there. You know, Mac was out there, Futter Nick, NYK Terry and Trey, CK2K. So the Saturday, we also hosted a happy hour for Knicks fans in the area. Yeah. So we about maybe 25, 30 of us. I, and people came from all over, man. People came from San Francisco. They came from Dallas. They came from New York. People who lived in Vegas uh, that knew about the part that knew about the happy hour came by. So that that was a great look, man. I would definitely encourage anyone listening, and especially you, Andrew. Next year, you, you guys got to come, man. I, we'll talk about the games in a second, but I I want to ask you about. Vegas real quick like we don't spend too much time on it but I know that they've been rumored to be the other city that might get an NBA team the next time expansion happens that we obviously Seattle is going to be one of them Mm -hmm. and then maybe Vegas did it seem like it could be a good NBA town from your perspective given the fact that gambling is now just on its way to being you know worldwide and federally regulated go go for it you know, you already have the, the Las Vegas Knights in hockey. You got yeah. the Raiders moving out there. Back in the day, the 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 reluctancy of putting a team out there was that it would be too close to the gambling. You know, and, and also how, how much loyalty are you going to get when a lot of the people there are tourists? Yeah. But, it, you know, the, the, the cer- certainly doesn't seem like it's it's stopping the Raiders. True. You had the Knights go to the Stanley Cup finals. And so that you know, certainly brought revenue there. So... Uh, Seattle definitely deserves it, so definitely go to Seattle. I know the Pittsburgh was under consideration, but I, I think Vegas could certainly be a top draw as far as an NBA city for sure. Fair enough, fair enough. Right, let's talk a little bit about summer league before we wrap yeah. up. Um, a lot was made of RJ's first two games. Not enough was made of his next two games. Uh, my take consistently was that none of these games matter. This is yeah. a scrimmage on television. We shouldn't be making any type of real judgments about a 19-year-old that's getting his feet wet on an NBA court. Uh, did anything you see alarm you, though, especially up close? No. To be to be honest, no, man. And it was, like, so disheartening. And like so crazy, the night the night after the earthquake, the game wasn't even a full full regulated game. It ended early, and before I could even get to the parking lot, I'm I'm getting uh, Instagram messages, Twitter DMs, YouTube comments. RJ's a bust. Oh, I can't believe it. He stinks. He can't shoot. He can't this. He can't. I said, you know, I can't believe it right now. I saw I saw uh, established journalists on Twitter talking about his flaws or everything that was that was evident in college. He, the, the, this kid's a bust. Bro, and I'm like, it was, I'm it like was listen. nonstop. You're hundred percent right. I, I'm like, listen, that's because my man just left college. <laughs> like what were you expecting? Kobe Bryant in year five? Like my man literally at last played a full organized game in March in college and now steps onto the court for the first time against his teammate, his best friend, in a nationally televised game, packed to the brim, pressure situation. 
I, I, I don't understand what people were looking for. For me personally, we, we were right there up close and personal. You could tell the first two games, he was very nervous. He was pressing on everything. And he was, and it was evident, you know, he's turning the ball over, missed a ton of shots, couldn't finish anything. His, even his parents were nervous in the stands, man. Like his father had a stone cold face on him during the, during the Phoenix game. Uh-huh. Um, but then, like you said, you know, the, 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 the next two games, he, he kind of settled in a little bit. And in the grand scheme of thing, it all, it all means nothing. I, I, I couldn't agree more. And I, I got, again, I hate arguing online it's one of my least favorite things to do but like I, I just sent out a simple tweet of these two statements are allowed to be true rj has looked horrible in his first two games and there are clearly some things he needs to work on and then this other statement of it's summer league he's 19 hasn't played an organized game in months and has all summer to work on these things. Like it doesn't right. have to be this extreme overreaction. And I know like this fan base to an extent is paranoid that the sky is always going to fall now that for the second, I guess third straight big free agency off season, yeah. the big fish didn't come to New York. That's still not a reason to overreact to summer league. Like this isn't even like if in, and I'm bringing it to baseball because that's 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 my second love, CP. Mm-hmm. Um, I this isn't even like overreacting to a spring training game. Like if a guy went 0 for three with three strikeouts in spring yeah. training, like if this isn't even that. This is like going to Arizona fall ball and being like, oh, he he looked silly in that one at bat that he is in the middle of winter in Arizona. Like like what are we doing here? It's summer league. This is. This was nothing back in the day. LeBron shot 34% in his summer league. Steph, Steph Curry shot 37% in his summer league. These games don't matter. They I, don't matter. I man. can't say and it enough. And it's like, just like spring training, just, summer league is a time to work on your game. Exactly. We already knew coming in that RJ was working. He was working on his right. He was sw- He was changing his shot. We already knew that he was working on that. And he, he was working on his agility, trying to get by guys, especially as he drives into the paint. Summer League is the time to work on your game. So you, you really can't get too high or too low. But I think it's twofold, and, and you had touched on one of it, one of them. Um, number one, the, the, the PTSD of this fan base is, it's, is, is at is It's at OD, fever. man. It's, it's so at, over the top right now. From, from, you know, from the constant losing seasons. Listen, we've, we've suffered – Six losing seasons in a row right now. Nick's tape is, is many moons away. And from the losing seasons, the 17 wins, the lottery disappointment, the free agency disappointment, everybody's just like ready for this quick rebound. And it, that's not going to be the case. And every night since Summer League, I've been trying to preach to the fans, like, you guys have to take a step back and enjoy the journey, man. We're on a long haul. We're on a long journey towards even being competitive so you, you we cannot overanalyze and psychoanalyze a kid in summer league and i think you know we're, we're in a social media instant gratification instant reaction mm. type of society and it's it's going to get even worse as we continue to go um into the future so we, we just got to be careful man we got to let this kid sit back and and grow and develop we don't want to put too much pressure on them because these guys are reading they're reading the tweets they're reading the instagram and, and and everything and it has to get to them this is this is different than when you know patrick ewan and mj and them were in the league if, if they didn't want to know about any negativity all they had to do was not read the newspaper bingo now you you almost can't avoid it yeah cr- so, so we got to be careful there criticism is a a swipe or an opening of an app away like, like mm-hmm. praises as well, but I understand you wanted to turn on Summer League and watch RJ dominate like the number third in the pick in the draft right. could, but clearly he is going to be a bit of a project. I'm not saying that he's not still going to have a successful rookie season. I'm saying that for two freaking games in Summer League. Absolutely. Because <laughs> he looked much better in, in his third and fourth game yeah. where he got two double-doubles <laughs> at 21 and 10 in his last game, and... I, like, where's the overreaction to that? R.J. Barrett had a double double in back to back summer league back-to-back games. Back to back games. Back to back games. Oh, man. I mean, listen, there were things that I liked from a couple guys. From R.J., uh, I liked the fact that both he and Knox were, were in full blown attack. Yeah. You know, Knox I, looks I, bigger, I, dude. He, he does. And in person, he did as well. 
Knox look first of all, he's he's tall as hell. He looks like a legit six <laughs> ten. And he yeah, he looks like he, you know, he, he brought the gun show out a little bit at, at Summer League. He looks like he's filling out a little bit. And like I said, he, he kind of looks his demeanor in the huddles and, and things of that nature. He looks like he, he got a little bit more mature as well. But I like that the two of them are, are in attack mode. I liked how RJ looked as the primary facilitator. It seemed like he was more comfortable in that role uh, than off the ball. So, again, you know, those are things that you look to when the season starts. It's like, OK, how will he look against better, better competition in that role? Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, we have to say Brezdikas. Uh, Iggy looked. Iggy. It looked like they found another gem in the second round. Iggy looks polished. I mean, for a kid coming off a one year college, he looks polished. He's another guy. I, I was sitting right behind the bench in, in the game, the Phoenix game that he went off. He By struck. the way, how? How did you get those seats? Like, I don't want to, to blow up your spot a bit, but every Wait. time they showed the Knicks bench, oh, hey, look, CP. <laughs> <laughs> like, literally every time. I was like, oh, that's really cool. <laughs> the, the, bro, this is why you guys got to come to Summer League, man. It's very casual. This isn't this isn't MSG where the ushers will throw you out the, the minute they see you moving. In Summer League, it's very open, man. People come. It's first come, first serve for every seat. So obviously for the Pelicans wow. game, we had to get there pretty early just to get into like the 100 sections in like the middle row. Um, but for any other game, man, whatever seat you see open, you go to. And, and fortunately enough, I was there with uh, uh, a longtime next season ticket holder, Greg Armstrong, who was there earlier in the day and he had an open seat. So I, I sat down there with him. And then as um, the other games would close, more people would leave. And then that's how the rest of us kind of kind of got up front, and and so that's how it is at summer league, man. It's very casual. I I am already looking forward to it. I gotta be honest. So gotta, you, you were saying come. you were you had a front row seat behind the bench. Oh, so so Iggy, man, the, this kid. Like I said, I'm I'm just surprised at how uh, poised and and policy is coming off of just one year in college. But the the kid, he, he's talked about it, and a lot of people have praised him for it. He he really is. Uh, not afraid of the moment. He's he's very strong. He 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 takes contact well. He he all his drives were just he's 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 a good finisher man and a good three point shooter. The the kid shot the ball very well, especially in that Phoenix game. And and he's tough man. And if if that can translate at the next level, we'll we'll see if he can crack the rotation. But he's gonna be a fan favorite. I have no doubt. I don't know if it's gonna be this year or when, but. He's eventually going to crack this rotation, and and the fan base is going to love this kid, man. I don't, sure. I don't know when the phrase like motor, like has a good motor, became part of the basketball yeah. lexicon and how we judge guys. Like I know a lot of people have questions about Kevin Knox's motor, and right. uh, RJ has had some questions come up again in the overreaction of his first two yeah. summer league games. Mm-hmm. Um, Iggy is someone whose motor I actually noticed. Like, okay, this guy doesn't stop moving on offense or defense I'm telling you man i'm telling you this kid went zero to a, in that phoenix game this kid was zero to a hundred on every possession on both ends of the floor it, I, i'm looking forward to it, it. it was, yeah it was great man I, I like this kid a lot did you meet any of the guys out in vegas like like who's the biggest person like celebrity wise that you um, met out there so alan houston was on my flight on the way there oh there you go h2o was was uh in the building alan houston was on the flight i didn't i didn't get to meet anyone on the current team begley you know sitting up front you saw all the guys kind of walk by so ian begley i know you, you guys probably saw me with flavor Flav during uh, the Phoenix yeah game. a little bit <laughs> yeah so I can and, and Flav is, is a long island guy man so we yeah we were, Sharing, sharing some memories because we kind of grew up in the, in the same area. So that was cool as well. And then that night, they had a, uh, uh, a summer league kickoff party that, that Sunday night at the win. So I went over there, met Woj and Shams oh. on the same night within like an hour of each other. You can't make it up, man. Andrew, I'm telling you, you guys got to come out, man. Are they it, like, it, are they friends or did you just meet I, them separately? I have, no, I met them separately. Okay, I don't, I don't okay. know. I'm not too sure, man. But I met James. I met uh, Sam Cassell. Uh, Myers Leonard was was in a group with Woj. A couple other <laughs> players. I, I don't remember, man. Hold but, on, but, hold on. The yeah. sentence you just said. <laughs> yeah. Myers yeah. Leonard was yeah. in a group with Woj. With Woj, yes. 
<laughs> standing tall over everyone looking like was, that, that's the definition of a who's who because my whole yeah. time would just be like who you know yeah look, looking like a tree it, it was just uh it's just, like i said it's just very open man you're likely to see anybody at any time uh for the mma fans out there chris weidman was was at the happy oh, wow hour. okay yeah and he's also a long island guy so and from the same area as me so that that was a cool conversation as well what so saturday night like, was the was the the fight um yeah. and then sunday was the world cup so I mean, look, there was stuff to do, too, you know, and it's there, Vegas, so... There was a lot. There was a lot going on, man. And like I said, I, I would highly encourage everyone listening, you, Andrew, to make that trip. It's right. a well worth it. It's a lot of fun. And like I said, there's so many Knicks fans out there, it's almost like a convention. All right. Well, listen, I'm I'm sold. I, I, I look like you guys are just having too much fun out there to not be part of it <laughs> next year. So. I'm telling you, man, it, it was a blast. <laughs> Listen, I have no clue what to put expectations on for next season, but hopefully I'm not going into next season summer league with, hey, look, our starting five. You know, <laughs> like hopefully, yeah, like, hopefully, it's, obviously it's not going to be RJ. No, or like hopefully it's not going to be RJ. Um, yeah. No Knox, no Mitchell Robinson, no Trier, no, no Keith, no Allen. It'll be like a new crop of guys that I've, I've haven't heard of, you know. Exactly, man. Well, you know, listen, we'll see. We'll, we'll see how these guys come together. It, this is Fizz, man. This, to yeah, me, this is all, a big year. He's got Fizz. such a big year ahead of him. It's like he's deciding how to get minutes at, how to divvy up minutes. I don't think of, like maybe you can come up with a, like a harder job a, a Nick coach has had to deal with. I don't think it's ever been done, at least since I've been following this team, yeah. that a coach has had to decide between this many players that consistently normally play to have them in a rotation that keeps everybody happy you know i told jails last night in in our conversation similar to this i said i'm glad i'm not the coach yeah oh, yeah. <laughs> that's all i left with i said i'm glad i'm not the coach man but yeah. hey i'm looking forward to it man i'm looking forward to it. it it's not a doomsday scenario as those boneheads in the media will paint it like i said i, I think we're we're in the right direction that we use the flexibility wisely and we're, we're, we're still good with the cap. We're still good with our draft stock. And, and we're adding some talent along the way. I mean, what more could you ask for? But we, we just have to continue to win some games. And we, we got to push for, like I said, to me, 29-30 is the bar. Anything over that to me would to, would be a success. Amen. Amen. Uh, he is CP of Knicks Fan TV. Uh, I don't even think I need to promote your stuff because, like, Everybody knows you, but if I do, check out his YouTube channel, uh, all of his live streams, all of the places that you can follow him on Twitter at Knicks Fan TV, on Instagram at Knicks Fan TV, and just check out if if you haven't joined in checking out their videos. I I really do respect this guy's hustle, and I think you will enjoy the content that creates as well. Uh, dude, thanks for <laughs> we're recording this at and it's currently eleven oh six p.m. on Thursday night. Uh, Westbrook just got traded for CP3, and then we jumped on to chat a little bit after. So I appreciate you giving me some time tonight, dude. Anytime, man. Anytime. Love the conversation, man. Have a good one. Absolutely. Uh, this has been Nothing But Knicks, the official New York Knicks podcast of Gotham Sports Network. If you dig the show, head on over to iTunes and give us a five-star rating and review. Plenty of content, maybe some baseball news to report over the weekend. So you want to stay tuned to Gotham's Twitter account over the coming days. Uh, post credits, uh, our TV and movie podcast. We have a brand new episode reviewing Spider-Man Far From Home. CP, have you seen this movie yet? I haven't seen that one or Into the Dark. I got to catch up. I got to catch up on my cinema, but it's on the list for sure. Okay. I'm a Marvel head, so I can't not see it. Okay. So I won't say anything about Spider-Man Far From Home, but I will say that when you do see it, you can listen to Post Credits, the official TV and movie podcast of Gotham Sports Network, and hear all of our spoilerific thoughts. So that episode should be out tomorrow or for you whenever you do go and see the movie. Um, Absolutely, man. We're also going to have a review of the movie Mid Somar and uh, yesterday, the Beatles movie that came out, and a general episode where Woj and I get anticipated for Lion King that comes out. Uh, also, Stranger Things, of course, to we'll talk about that. So plenty of pop culture and sports content going up at GothamSN.com. But until next time, take care, everybody. And as always, let's go Knicks.